Hi, I'm Jo Shorthouse. I'm a managing editor on Script and I'm here at Bio Europe in Copenhagen. Um, I'm really pleased to be joined by Deborah Dunsire, who is the new CEO of Lundbeck, who specialises in neurological disorders. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, you only started as CEO in September. Could you um, give me an idea of your journey so far to this point and what attracted you to Lundbeck? Well, let's start by saying what attracted me to Lundbeck. Mm. Lundbeck is a company that's focused on an area of really huge unmet medical need, which mm. is the diseases of the brain in psychiatry and neurology. And I'm a physician by background, and my whole career in industry has been about trying to change the paradigm for people who don't have adequate therapy. And so certainly coming to a company that has the vision mm. to make a difference for those patients fits very nicely. Lundbeck also has a heritage of bringing forward great products for patients experiencing mental illness or neurological illness. So I know that the company has a heritage on which to build. Uh, the company also has an exciting pipeline now mm. and will have going forward. We have our own innovative research. So it had all the pieces. It's selling its products globally. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I really enjoy being involved from the bench all the way to the bedside. And mm -hmm. Lundbeck allows me to do that with a vision of bringing new therapies for patients with brain diseases. Now, how have I come to be there? You can tell from my accent that I come from the Southern Hemisphere, from mm -hmm. was born in Zimbabwe and grew up in South Africa. Okay. I'm a physician by background. I have worked as a practicing physician, but also in industry. I've been in industry 30 years with Sandoz, Novartis, uh, Millennium Pharmaceuticals, yes. Forum, and X Stewart. And so I have a, a background both in R&D and in more in development and in sales and marketing, and then in overall company leadership um, since I took over as CEO at Millennium Pharmaceuticals in 2005. Right. Um, I was wondering if I could ask you about um, a recent setback that Lundbeck had in a, a phase three clinical trial of AF35700, which was your novel antipsychotic uh, in treatment resistant schizophrenia. Um, there is a market for this drug. Um, so I was just wondering how Lundbeck was planning on going forward with it. Is it going to be dumped from the pipeline? How, how, how are things going to progress with that? 35700, as you said, was targeted towards treatment resistant schizophrenia, a very, very high unmet medical yeah, need and yeah. a very difficult patient population to, to actually achieve an outcome of a successful medicine. What we showed was a very safe and effective product that was as effective but not superior to right. uh, the conventional therapies. So we're looking at that and saying, is there a path forward? Yes. And so we're in the process of evaluating that right now uh -huh. to see is there a, a potentially positive pathway forward for patients and one that is commercially viable. Right. And once we're through with that analysis, we'll be able to tell you whether we'll be going forward and in what way or whether we won't be going forward. Okay. So um, what else has Lundberg got in the pipeline? What's exciting in the pipeline for you? You know, we've got a couple of products in uh, phase two and one product, an, an ex a label extension for Rexalti, uh, Rex okay. Piprazole product that we partner with Otsuka Pharmaceuticals for Alzheimer's agitation. And that is a critical and yeah. medical need. So we look forward to the, the readout of that. It's a third of uh, three phase three pivotal trials okay. that we will be seeing in uh, 20, late 2020. Okay. In phase two, we have uh, products in Parkinson's disease, one that we uh, acquired, from, we acquired Prexton uh, Therapeutics mm, earlier yes. in the year, and that brought a phase two asset in Parkinson's disease mm -hmm. forward. We also have a, a compound for Alzheimer's disease, uh, an immunotherapy going into phase two. And there are a number of others in phase two, some of which the targets haven't been disclosed. Right. And then we've had four compounds come into the clinical pipeline from research uh, earlier in the year okay. this year. So there's a lot of innovation, there's a lot of momentum mm. and a lot going on there that we'll be there. able to bring forward okay. in the coming months and years. Um, 
You're on a panel later on today at BioEurope um, about the current climate of CNS R&D, um, what lessons we've learned and the road forward. Um, I was just wondering if you could give us kind of a, a, a snippet of, of what you believe the road forward is um, for CNS R&D. I think one of the things that we need to do in the CNS is drive forward in understanding the most appropriate patient subsections or subsets for particular therapies, looking for biomarkers that can help us figure out in whom a drug will be effective and why. And that's been really lacking, particularly in psychiatry. And it's not because people haven't tried, yes, it's yeah. because it's very difficult to do. But I think that's something that as we get better imaging of the brain, better understanding of the circuitry of the brain, better understanding of the genetics underpinning these diseases, that we will, in the coming, you know, at least decade, mm. be able to get a much better grip on biomarker-driven right. drug development. So that, for me, would be one area. The other thing that we're doing even right now is using machine learning and artificial intelligence to help us drive our clinical programs forward to develop insights about the patient population, how fast do they progress, what are parameters or markers that we can discern from big data sets that help us figure out the patient subsets. We're also using it in thinking about how we design our clinical trials and which sites we use okay. for our clinical trials. So I think the, the role of big data has a, a, a big role to play going forward. And I think, you know, we've faced this lesson so many times that this is, it's very difficult to study diseases of the brain. Yes. So we have to figure out new tools that allow us to not do what we've done in the past, but be more uh, intentional and thoughtful in our drug development. Wonderful. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and, uh, and for getting your, your thoughts on neurology R&D. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.